Starvation is a natural response when we become hungry. But what if the feeling of starvation lasted for a whole six months? In the 1940s, a group of healthy men underwent the ultimate hunger test as part of a study conducted at the University of Minnesota. Surprisingly, the most challenging aspect of the study was not the period of starvation, but the subsequent refeeding phase. Even more disturbing were the effects on their mental state. Throughout the ordeal, they became utterly fixated on food to the point where it consumed their every thought. Some even descended into insanity. And one volunteer even harmed himself because he could no longer bear it. All of this was done in the name of aiding the millions of people who unwillingly starved during the war. What exactly transpired during this harrowing experiment? In the midst of World War II, where people all over Europe were starving, the US military wanted to find the best way to refeed them. So, an experiment was conducted with the reason painted as, they, the volunteers, starved so that others will be better fed. At the time, there was limited scientific knowledge about how to rehabilitate individuals who had suffered from severe malnutrition. And so, Ansel Keys and his colleagues proposed a bold human experiment, subjecting volunteers to semi-starvation and then refeed them. For the study to push through, the first thing Keys needed were participants. But how do you get volunteers to participate in being hungry all the time? Surprisingly, the answer was as simple as sending out brochures with the thought-provoking question, will you starve so that others may be better fed? This appeal resonated particularly with conscientious objectors, men who refused to take part in the war on the grounds of conscience. For them, it provided an alternative way to contribute without bearing arms. In the end, 36 able-bodied men were chosen from a pool of conscientious objectors. The study had five phases in total, each lasting 12 weeks. In the first phase, the 36 men underwent a three-month period of normal eating. This phase served as the baseline to establish their normal physical and mental state. They were given the same diet but were suited according to their body requirements. At this phase, the staff measured every part of their body imaginable, such as weight, height, stomach size, eyesight, hand-eye coordination, bone density, and lung capacity. And samples were also taken, such as urine, stool, sperm, and bone marrow. Their usual mood and personality were taken note of as well. While the first three months were easily manageable, they were simply doing their normal routine anyway. But the same cannot be said for the following six months. On the 12th of February 1945, the phase of semi-starvation began, marking the start of the experiment's true horrors. They were only given two meals a day out of three different menus. The meals they were given were cycled each day and start over again once they finish each cycle. The menus were designed to be monotonous and similar with the food found in Central European countries during famine, which consists of whole wheat, bread, potatoes, cereals, turnips, and cabbages, and a small amount of dairy and meat were also added. Approximately half of their caloric needs were cut off from their meals during the entirety of this period. The goal of this was to simulate famine which was faced by the people during the war. But in this simulation, the participants were allowed to continue on with their usual routines. They maintained their regular jobs and activities as long as they did not interfere with the experiment. In the first few weeks, they still had a bit of energy to go along with their routine. But gradually, the simplest task became too much for them. Walking a flight of stairs became impossible without taking a break or two. Sitting straight became a pain so they had to bring pillows everywhere they go to act as a cushion. And to add to their physical strain, they were also expected to walk approximately 22 miles and spend half an hour on a treadmill each week. It became too much for them that they would run to the point of collapse. 
all they wanted to do was lie down in the sun and wait for the six months to be over. One of the men, Jay Garner, said, We would go into a restaurant and order just a cup of coffee and sit and watch other people eat. And it bothered us to see people come in, only eat half of their food, and just leave the other half. They tried to find ways to cope with their hunger, but it all revolved around the obsession of food. One volunteer took great interest in collecting cookbooks to drool over. Their obsession over food have also muted their desire for women. While some of the men continued to pursue romantic relationships, in reality, none of them truly felt any interest in them. The ones who maintained their dating life was in reality competing with one another of who can date the longest. Sometimes, they would go watch a movie, but comedic scenes were no longer funny, and love scenes were boring. Can you guess which scene is the best for them? The parts that involve people eating. When it was mealtime, each and every one of them had their own way of savoring their food. Some chose to eat it as quickly as they can and not have to think about it, whilst others chose to eat it as slow as possible, savoring each bite. Remember how the food was designed to be monotonous? Well, the volunteers didn't really care whether or not it was monotonous. As long as it was food, everything tasted delicious. One of the volunteers even said, even the dirty crust of bread in the street looked appetizing, and we envied the fat pigeons pecking at them. About two months into the experiment is when the study started to get into their heads. Some of the men started to break down. They completely lost control over themselves. One man went to a grocery shop but didn't buy anything. He shoplifted. What the man took were potatoes, carrots, and onions root vegetables that were the basis of their diet, and stuffed himself. Another man, coming back from his 22 miles walk downtown, stopped by an ice cream shop to order a dish of ice cream. Once he started eating, he couldn't stop himself. So he ordered some more on his way to the lab over and over again, until he reached the lab to report that he had failed to maintain his diet. What these men were experiencing were the decline to reason rationally, and thus, the men were either removed from the experiment or dropped from the final results for cheating for not losing weight according to plan. Ever since then, the staff wouldn't let the volunteers walk on their own. They either had to walk with a partner or a staff member to keep each other accountable from losing control. Now, before we enter the most disturbing phase of the experiment, let's lighten up the mood a little bit because I have a very exciting news to share with you guys. This video you're watching right now is sponsored, marking our channel's very first brand deal with Surfshark VPN. With sponsors like this, not only can I continue to produce high quality videos for you guys, but I also get to earn my bread by doing what I love, which is a win-win for all of us. Also, the thing about me, if you haven't noticed yet from watching my videos is that I love watching movies. And a part of my job as a content creator is that I need inspiration. And one of my sources to get inspiration from is by watching movies and shows. And if you don't know yet, the library of movies and shows you watch on Netflix depends on where you live. And this is why I use Surfshark because I get access to a broader library of movies and shows regardless of where I live. Now, you might still have concerns about how much it's gonna cost you, especially since you're already paying for various streaming apps. Well, Surfshark has agreed to make a generous deal with me where you get to use their service for 3 months free of charge. There's really no reason not to sign up because by using their service, you're also protecting yourself from prying eyes. At this day and age, online threats and data breaches are a constant concern, which is why having a reliable VPN like Surfshark is essential. Whether you're browsing, streaming, or conducting sensitive transactions, you can have peace of mind knowing that Surfshark VPN is safeguarding your digital presence. 
So don't miss out on this incredible opportunity and enjoy the benefits of unrestricted streaming and secure internet browsing by using the link in the description to get 3 months for free plus 83% off after that. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the starvation experiment. On July 29th, 1945, as the starvation phase was coming to an end, the men's anticipation grew as they couldn't wait to eat normally again because what comes after the starvation phase is the three-month rehabilitation phase. To their surprise, however, their suffering intensified even further during this period. It ended up being psychologically the hardest phase for most of the men. The participants were put on a very limited increase in calories, which was excruciatingly disappointing for them. Rather than gaining weight at the beginning of the phase, they continued to lose weight as their bodies slowly recovered and replenished with healthy tissue. This led to feelings of despair and confusion, to the extent that one volunteer could not explain his actions even after 50 years. One such incident involved Sam Lagg and his fellow participant who were visiting friends for dinner during their rehab phase. Carrying their own pre-measured food from the lab, they sat beside a fireplace on a late summer evening. As the fire started to die down, Sam suddenly stood up, claiming he knew where the wood pile was and that there was an axe outside. He said he needed to split some wood to add to the fire. Being just the third week of rehabilitation, Sam Lag weighed only about 113 pounds and could hardly lift the axe. And then, for whatever reason, he brought down the axe to his left hand, chopping away three of his fingers. I admit to being crazy mixed up at the time, Lag says many years later. The scientists referred to this as a severe case of semi-starvation neurosis. Immediately, he was sent to the hospital to get stitched up, and he remembered vividly the horror on the young hospital staff's face as she thought he ate them, but in reality, he buried them in a backyard in Minneapolis. Reports from the experiment noted that Lack was desperate to end the ordeal, but at the same time was also despondent about the prospect of the study not succeeding. With his stitched up hand, Sam Lack went back to the lab and finish the experiment. And now, we reach the final part. The men were finally allowed to eat whatever they wanted. They binged on food so heavily that they got sick. This phenomenon was similar to what was observed in survivors of the concentration camps. Although it was the end after three months of rehab, the men gained weight so slowly that they were still underweight by the end of it. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The war came to an end unexpectedly early. The whole point of the experiment is to serve the millions who became victims of the war. The announcement of Japan's surrender interrupted the men while they were eating. The food was the important thing. We did not care whether the war was over or not, as long as we got our food. Germany surrendered in May and Japan in August, months away from the deadline of the experiment. The US military was desperate for answers from Dr. Keyes, and he could only give tentative answers about what he knows in the study so far. In the end, the battle against post-war world hunger was largely fought without the findings of the Minnesota starvation experiment. This story seems to have no shortage of twists, as even at the end of the experiment, since the test subjects were conscientious objectors, the US government never paid them. And since they were not soldiers, they did not qualify for veterans' benefits as well. These men have fought their own battlefield. In their own way, they served their country and sacrificed themselves while doing so. In their own way, these men were scarred in a war they fought, and undeniably, their contributions should not be left unheard. The impact of the study only came years later because it took another five years until the study was finally published. Because of its rich detail and how unique it is, the research has become a classic. 
In summary, the experiment revealed that starving individuals require a substantial intake of raw calories, up to 4,000 per day. Now, ask yourself, were the insights collected from the experiment worth the extreme psychological distress endured by the participants? And if given the chance, would you do the same?